Hello, I'm Chris DiMartino, and welcome to the Short Waves video on discrete optimization with monolithics models in Keysight ADS. Let's get started. Optimization is a major aspect of many design workflows. Monolithics microwave global models for capacitors, inductors, and resistors scale with respect to part value, making these models ideal for optimization. On top of that, these models include a discrete optimization feature in Keysight Pathwave Advanced Design System. Discrete optimization takes the optimization process even further because this form of optimization automatically adjusts the component values to the optimal real-life manufacturer part values. To demonstrate discrete optimization in ADS with Monolithics Microwave Global Models, we'll present a low-pass filter design example that you can see here. For this filter, our goal is to achieve a passband to 2 GHz. You can see that our filter schematic simply contains ideal component models. The component values were calculated from a filter synthesis tool. Here you can see the simulated S21 and S11. Now let's replace the ideal component models with monolithics microwave global models. For the capacitors, we'll use the microwave global model for the AVX 600L series. And for the inductors, we'll use the microwave global model for the Coilcraft 0402 CS series. Also for this design, we'll use a 16 mil thick Rogers 4003C substrate. Let's now simulate this filter using the monolithics models with the same part values from before. Now, when we see the results, we can see that the frequency response shifted downward by about 400 megahertz. This is a result of using monolithics parasitic models for real life parts rather than ideal component models. Now the next step is to add the necessary microstrip interconnections to turn this into a complete design. After we simulate the complete filter, we can see that the frequency response shifted further downward. So let's optimize this design so that we can achieve our goals. Now before performing a discrete optimization, it is recommended to perform a continuous optimization. Performing a continuous optimization first brings us closer to the final part values. We can then perform a discrete optimization that focuses on a more narrow range of part values based on the results of the continuous optimization. Let's configure the models for a continuous optimization using the conventional approach. In this case, we're using variables for the part values. You can see that we have three different variables here. The part values of the models are set to the corresponding variable. Of course, we also need to set up our optimization goals, which you can see here. We're shooting for an S11 of less than minus 14 dB up to 2 GHz. We also want at least 25 dB of rejection from 3.2 to 6 GHz. Let's now run the continuous optimization. After that finishes, we can take a look at the results. You can see the part values after performing the continuous optimization. Of course, these values are not real life manufacturer part values. This is where discrete optimization enters the picture. Again, a discrete optimization is different than a continuous optimization because a discrete optimization automatically adjusts the component values to optimal real life manufacturer part values. Let's configure this design for a discrete optimization. To do that, we'll need to go to the model parameters. Select the discrete parameter, followed by discrete optimization. Next, we need to set the nominal value along with the maximum and minimum values. Again, we can set these values based on the results of the continuous optimization. After we've done that for each model, let's go to our optimization setup. Let's select all of our discrete model parameters for the optimization. Of 
Of course, you can just select Use all optimization variables in design if the discrete model parameters are the only optimization variables present. We'll also need to set the optimization type to discrete. Next, we can just run the optimization. Here are the simulated results after running the discrete optimization. Our design goal is now met. For comparison, this table shows the original ideal component values, the values after performing a continuous optimization, and the final real life manufacturer part values after performing a discrete optimization. So, to wrap it all up, the discrete optimization feature is very helpful because it enables designers to determine the best suited manufacturer part values for a design. For more information or to request a free trial, visit www.modelithics.com or email sales at modelithics.com.